Make the world of his destiny our people, for our own dark black place. If he be not born to be hanged, our case is miserable. Direful spectacle of the rack which touched the very virtue of compassion in thee. I have, with such provision in mine heart, so safely ordered that there is no soul, no, not so much perdition as an head, be tid to any creature in the vessel which thou heardst cry, which thou saw <sighs> sink. Sit down, for thou must now know farther. You have often begun to tell me what I am, but stopped, and left me to a bootless inquisition, concluding, stay not yet. The hours now come. The very minute bids thee ope thine ear, obey, and be attentive. Canst thou remember a time before we came unto this set? I do not think thou canst, for then thou wast not out three years old. Well, certainly, sir, I can. By what? By any other house or person of anything the image tell me that hath kept with thy remembrance. It is more like a dream than an assurance, and far off. Had I not four or five women who once tended? Thou hadst, and more, Miranda. But how is it that this lives in thy mind? What seest thou else in the dark backward and abysm of time? If thou rememberest aught ere thou camest here, how thou camest here thou mayst. Well, that, sir, I do not. Twelve years since, Miranda. Twelve years since. Thy father was the Duke of Milan and a prince of power. But, sir, aren't you my father? <laughs> thy mother was a piece of virtue, and she said thou wast my daughter. But and thy father was the Duke of Milan, and his only heir and princess no worse issue. Oh, the heavens! What foul play had we 
that we came from that, so it was it blessed that we did. Both? Both, my dear girl, thy foul play, as thou sayest, were we heaved then, but blessedly hope hither. Sit down, and I pray thee, Mark. What leads thy to think of teen and I turn thee to which my remembrance was? Is it father? My brother, thy uncle, called Antonio, I pray thee, Mark, that a brother could be so perfidious, he who next thyself of all the world I loved, and to him put the manage of my state. As at that time through all the seigneuries it was the first and prosperous, the prime duke being so reputed in dignity and for the liberal arts without parallel. Those being all my study, the government I cast upon my brother, and to my state grew stranger, being transported and wrapped in secret studies. Thy false uncle, dost thou attend me? Certainly, sir, I do. Being once perfected how to grant suits, how to deny them, who to advance, and who to trash for overtopping. New created the creatures that were mine, or changed them, or else new formed them, having both the key of officer and office set, all hearts in a state to what tune pleased his ear, that now he was the ivy which had hid my princely trunk, and sucked my verger out upon. Thou tense not! Oh, good sir, I do. I pray thee, mark me. I, thus neglecting worldly ends, all dedicated to the closeness and bettering of my mind with that which, by being so retired, overprized all popular rate, in my brother waked an evil nature, and my trust, like a good parent, did beget of him a falsehood in its contrary, as great as my trust was, which had indeed no limit, a confidence sans bound. He, being thus loaded, not only with what my revenue yielded, but what my power might else exact, like one who having into truth by telling of it made such a sinner of his memory to credit his own lie, he did believe he was indeed the duke, out of the substitution and executing the outward face of royalty with all prerogative. Hence his ambition growing. Dost thou hear? Sir, your tale could cure deafness. <laughs> To have no screen between the part he played and he who played it for, he needs will be absolute Milan. Me, poor man, my library was duped him large enough. Of temporal royalties he thinks me now incapable. Confederate, so dry he was for sway, with the king of Naples to give him tribute, do him homage, subject his coronet to his crown, and bend the dukedom yet unbound. Alas, poor Milan. To most ignoble stupid. Oh, today. Here a little further, then I'll bring you to the question. This king of Naples, being an enemy to me, inveterate, hearkens my brother's suit, which was that he, in lieu of the premises of homage, and I not know how much tribute, should presently extirpate me and mine out of the dukedom and confer fair Milan with all the honors on my brother, whereon a treacherous army levy one midnight faded to the purpose, did Antonio open the gates of Milan, and in the dead of darkness the ministers for the purpose hurried thence me and thy crying self. I for pity, I, not remembering how I cried out then, will cry it over again. Tis a hint that brings mine eyes to it. Sit down, here a little further. And I'll bring thee to the current business, which now supports, without the which this story were most impertinent. Wherefore did they not this hour destroy us? Well demanded, wench. My tale provokes that question. Dear they durst not. So dear the love my people bore me, nor set a mark so bloody on the business, but with colors fairer painted their foul ends. In few they hurried us aboard a bark, and bore us some leagues to sea, where they prepared a rotten carcass of a butt, not rigged, nor tackle, nor sail, nor mast, the very rats instinctively have quitted. And there they hoist us to cry to the sea that roared to us, to sigh to the winds, whose pity, sighing back again, did us but loving wrong. What trouble was I then to you? Oh, that cherubim thou wast that did preserve me. Thou didst smile, infuse it with a fortitude from heaven. While I have decked the sea with drops, full salt under my burden grown, 
which raised in me an undergoing stomach to bear up against what should ensue. How came we ashore? By providence divine. Some food we had and some fresh water, that of good Neapolitan Gonzala, out of her charity, being then appointed master of this design to give us, with rich garments, linen, stuffs, and necessaries, which since have steaded much. So of her charity, knowing I loved my books, she furnished me from mine own library with volumes that I prized above my duty. Would you <coughs> ever see this woman? Now I arise, sit still, and hear the last of our sea sorrow. Here in this island we arrived, and here have I, thy schoolmaster, made thee more profit than other princes can, who have indeed more time for vainer hours, and tutors not so careful. Sir, and I thank you for it. But now, for still is beating in my mind, your reason for raising this sea storm. Know thus far forth, by accident, most strange, bountiful fortune, now, my dear lady, hath mine enemies brought to this shore. And I find that my zenith doth depend on a most auspicious star, whose influence, if I court not now, but omit, my fortunes will ever after droop. Here cease more questions. Thou art inclined to sleep. Tis a good dullness, and give it way. I know thou canst not choose. Come away, servant! Come! I am ready now. Approach my Ariel. Come! All hail, great master. Great sir, hail. I come to answer thy best pleasure, be it to fly, to swim, to dive into the fire, to ride on curled clouds. A strong bidding task, Ariel, and all for quality. Hast thou, spirit, performed to point the tempest that I bade thee? To every article, and mortification, the beat, the waste, the death, in every cabin I flame the nation. Sometimes I divide and burn in many places. The topmast, the yards, and bowsprit when I flame distinctly, then meet and join. Jove's lightning, the precursors, the dreadful thunderclaps, more momentary in sight outrunning or not. The fire and cracks of sulfurous roaring the most mighty Neptune seem to besiege, and make his bold waves tremble, make his dread trident shake. That's my brave spirit. Who was so firm, so constant, that this coil could not infect his reason? Not a soul, but from the fever of the mad and played some tricks of desperation. All but mariners plunged into the foaming brine and quit the vessel, then all afire with me. The king's son, Ferdinand, with hair upstairing, then like reeds, not hair, was the first man that left and cried, Hell is empty and all the devils are here! Oh, my tricksy spirit! But was not this nigh shore? Close by, my master. But are they areas safe? Not a hair perished. On their sustaining garments, not a blemish, but fresher than before. And as thou bads me, in troops I have dispersed them about the isle. The king's son have I landed by himself, whom I left cooling of the air with sighs, and sitting his arms in the sad knot. Of the king's ship, the mariners say how thou hast disposed, and all the rest of the fleet. Safely in harbor is the king's ship, in the deep nook where once thou called to me but midnight, the bed dew, and still that's removed. There she sits. The mariners all under hatches stowed, who with the charm joined with their separate labor, I have left asleep. As for the rest of the fleet, which I dispersed, they have all met again and are upon the Mediterranean float, bound sadly home for Naples, supposing that it saw the king's ship rack and his great person perish. Ariel, thy charge exactly is performed, but there's more work. What is the time of the day? Past the mid-season. At least two glasses. The time for six, and now must by us both be spent most precious. Is there more toil? Since thou dost give me pains, let me remember thee what thou hast promised, which has not yet performed me. How now? Moody. <laughs> what is thou canst demand? My liberty. Before the time be out, no more. I prithee remember, I have done thee worthy service. Told thee no lies, made no mistake, served without grudge or grumblings. Thou did promise to bait me a full year. Dost thou forget from what a torment I did free thee? No. Thou dost, and thinkest it much to tread the ooze of the salt deep, to run upon the sharp wind of the north, to do me business in the veins of the earth when it is baked with frost. I do not, sir. Thou liest, malignant thing! Hast thou forgot the foul witch, Sycorax? who with age and envy was grown into a hoop. Hast thou forgot her? No, sir. Thou hast. 
Where was she born? Speak, tell me. Sir, in our years. Oh, was she so? <laughs> I must once in a month recount what thou hast been, which thou forgetst. This damned witch, Sycorax, for mischiefs manifold and sorceries terrible to enter human hearing from Argiers, thou knowest was banished. For one thing she did, they would not take her life. Is not this true? Aye, sir. This blue-eyed hag was hither brought with child, and here was left by the sailors. Thou, my slave, as thou reports thyself, wast then her servant. And for thou wast a spirit too delicate to act her earthy in the board commands, refusing her grand hests. She did confine thee, with the help of her more potent ministers, and in her most unmitigable rage, into a cloven pine. Within which rift, imprisoned, thou didst painfully remain a dozen years. Within which space she died, and left thee there, where thou didst vent thy groans as fast as mill wheels strike. Then was this island, save for the sun she did litter here, a freckled whelp, hag born, not honored with a human shape. Yes, Caliban, her son. Dull thing, I say so. He, that Caliban, whom now I keep in service. Thou best knowest what torment I did find thee in. Thy groans did make wolves howl and penetrate the breasts of ever angry bears. It was a torment to lay upon the dam, which Sycorax could not again undo. It was mine art when I arrived and heard thee that made get the pine and let thee out. If thou more murmurest, I will rend an oak and paint thee in his naughty entrails till thou hast howled away twelve winters. Pardon, master, and we correspondent to command. Do my sprite in Do so. And after two days, I will discharge them. That's my noble master. What shall I do? Say what? What shall I do? Go make thyself like a nymph of the sea. Be subject to no sight but thine and mine, invisible to every eyeball else. Go. Take this shape and hither come in. Go hence with diligence! <laughs> awake, dear heart, awake. Thou hast slept well, awake. The strangeness of your tale put heaviness in me. Shake it off. Come on, <laughs> we'll visit Caliban, my slave, who never yields us kind answers. Villain, sir, I do not wish to look on. But, as it is, we cannot miss him. He does fetch our wood, make our fire, and serves in offices that profit us. <laughs> what ho, slave Caliban! Thou earth, thou, speak! There's wood enough within. Come forth, I say, there's other business for thee. <laughs> Come, thou tortoise, when? Fine apparition, my quaint Ariel, hearken thine ear. My lord, it shall be done. Thou poisonous slave, got by the devil himself upon thy wicked dam, come forth! As wicked do is there my mother brush with rain and feather from unwholesome then drop on you both! A southwest blow on you and blister you all over. For this, be sure, tonight thou shalt have cramps. Side stitches that shall pen <laughs> thy breath up. Urchins shall forth at vast of night that they may work all exercise on thee. Thou shalt be as pinched, as thick as honeycomb, each pinch more stinging than the bees that made it. I must eat my dinner. <laughs> this island is mine, by Sycorax, my mother, which thou takest from me. When thou camest first, thou strokest me, and made much of me. Wouldst give me water with berries in it, and teach me how to make the bigger light, and how the less that burn by day and night. And then I loved thee. And show thee all the qualities of the isle. The fresh springs. The brine pits. The barren place and the fertile. <laughs> Curse be I that did so. All the 
charms of Sycorax. Toads, beetles, bats, light on you, for I am all the subjects that you have, which first was my own king. And here, you sty me in this hard rock, whilst you do keep me from the rest of the island. Thou most lying slave, whom stripes may move, not kindness. I have used thee, filth as thou art, with humane care, and lodged thee in mine own cell, till thou didst seek to violate the honor of my child. Oh, ho, oh, 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 ho, oh, it had been done! Uh, uh, thou didst prevent me. <laughs> I had peopled else this isle with Caliban. Horrid slave! Any print of goodness will not take being capable of all ill. I pity thee, took pains to make thee speak, taught thee each hour one thing or another. When thou didst not savage, know thine own meaning, but wouldst gabble like a thing most brutish. I endowed thy purpose with words to make them known. Thy vile race, though thou didst learn which had and which good natures could not abide by, thus wast thou deservedly confined to this rock, when thou didst deserve more than a prison. You taught me language, and my profit on it is I know how to curse. The red plague weep for learning me your Hence, see! Hence! Fetch us in fuel, and be quick. Thou art best to answer other business. Shruggest thou malice? If thou neglectest, or dost unwillingly what I command, I'll rack thee with old cramps, fill all thy bones with aches, Make thee roar that beast should tremble at thy dick. No, pray thee! I must obey. His art is of such power. It would control my dam's god, Sitibos, so and make a vassal of him. So, slave, hence. Can't. my father's rack. His music crept by me upon the water, allaying both its fury and my passion with its sweet air. Thence I have followed it, or rather have drawn it. But tis gone. No, because yet. Thou seest yonder. What is it? 
A spear? Lord, how it looks about! Believe me, sir, it carries a brave form. Tis a spear. No wench, it eats and sleeps and hath such senses as we had such. This gallant which thou seest was in the rack, and though he's something stained with grief, that's beauty's canker. You mightst call him a goodly person. He has lost his fellows and strays about to find him. I might call him a thing divine, for nothing natural I ever saw so noble. It goes on, I see, as my soul prompts it. <laughs> Most sure, the goddess on whom these ends attend. Vouchsafe my prayer, may no one remain upon this island, and some good instruction you'll give how I may bear me. My prime request, which I do last announce, is always a wonder if you be made or no. No wonder, sir. But certainly a maid. My language! Heavens! <laughs> I'm the best that speak this speech where it is spoken. How? The best. What wert thou if the king of Naples heard thee? A single thing as I am now that wonders to hear thee speak of Naples. He does hear me, and that he does I weep. Myself and Naples, who with mine eyes never since I had beheld the king, my father, racked. Alas, for pity! Yes, faith and all his lords, the Duke of Milan and his brave son, being twain. The Duke of Milan and his more braver daughter could control thee if not were fit to do. At first sight they have exchanged eyes. Ere you, I'll set thee free for this. <coughs> A word! Good sir, I fear you have done yourself some wrong. A word. Why speaks my father so ungently? This is the third man that e'er I saw, the first that e'er I sighed for. Did he move my father to be inclined my way? Oh, if a virgin and your affection's not gone forth, I'll make thee the queen of Naples. So, oh, sir, one word more. They are both in either's power, but this swift business I must uneasy make, lest too light a winning make the prize light. One word more, I charge thee that thou attend me! Thou dost hear, usurp the name thou owest not, and hast put thyself on this island as a spy. To win it from me, the Lord on. No, as I am a man. Nothing ill can dwell in such a temple. If the ill spirit have such fair a house, good things will strive to dwell with it. Speak, not you for him. He's a traitor. Come, I'll manacle thy neck and feed together. Sea water shalt thou drink. Thy food shall be the fresh brooked mussels, withered roots, and husks wherein the acorn cradled. Follow. No. I will resist such entertainment until mine enemy has more power. A pretty father. Make not too harsh a trial for him, for he's gentle, not fearful. What, I say, my foot, my tutor? Put thy sword up, traitor, who makest a show but darest not strike thy conscience is so possessed with guilt. Come from thy war, for I can here disarm thee with this stick and make their weapon drop. I beseech you, father. Hence hang not on my garments. I believe for surety, I pray thee. Silence! One word more shall make me chide thee, if not hate thee. What? An advocate for an imposter. Hush. Thou thinkest there is no more such shapes as he having seen but him and Caliban. Foolish wench. To the most of men, this is a Caliban, and they to him are angels. My affections are then most humble. For I desire to see no goodlier man. Come on, obey. Thy nerves are in their infancy again, and have no vigor in them. So they are. My spirits, as in a dream, are all bound up. My father's loss, the weakness I feel, the rack of all my friends, nor this man's threats, to whom I am subdued, are but light to me. Might I but through my prison once a day behold this maid? Let liberty make use of all else corners of the world. Space enough provides such prisons. It works. Come! <laughs> Mary, thou hast done well. Follow me! Hark what else thou shalt do. Good sir, how come? My father is not as harsh as he appears by speech. His behavior is unwanted. 
thou shalt be as free as mountain winds, but else do exactly as I command. The syllable. Come, follow, speak not for him. Dido. Oh, 
Widow Dido. I, Widow Dido. Is not Sir Mike Tuplet as fresh as the day I first wore it? I mean, in a sort. So that sort was walking ashore. When I wore it at your daughter's marriage. You burned these words into my ears against the stomach of my sense. But I had never married my daughter there. For coming then she is lost. In my rage she is who is so far from Italy removed. I never again <coughs> shall see her. Oh now, mine heir of Naples and Milan. What strange fish hath made his meal on thee? Sir. He may live. I saw him beat the surges under him. He trod the water, his bold head bobbed the contentious waves he kept, and oared himself with good arms and lusty stroke to the shore, that o'er his wave-worn bases bowed, as stooping to relieve him. I not doubt he came live to land. No, no, he's Sir, you may think yourself for this great loss, <coughs> that would not bless our Europe with your daughter, but rather lose her to an him, where she at least is banished from your eye, who hath caused the wet on it. For the peace. You were kneeled to and importuned otherwise by all of us, and the fair soul herself weighed between loveliness <coughs> and obedience at which end of the game you should bow. We have lost your son, I fear forever, but Milan and Naples have more widows in them of this business making than we bring men to comfort them. False your own. So is the dearest of the loss. My Lord Sebastian! The truth you speak doth lack like some gentleness and time to speak it in. You rub the sore when you should bring the plaster. <coughs> well. And most chirurgically. <laughs> it is foul weather in us all, good sir, when you are cloudy. Foul weather? Very foul. Had I plantation of this isle, my lord? She'd sow it with nettle seed. Or docks, or mallows. And we're queen on it. What would I do? Escape being drunk for want of wine. <laughs> In the commonwealth, I would buy contraries, execute all things, for no kind of magistrate would I admit. Letters should not be known, riches, poverty, and use of service, none. Contract, succession, Born, bound of land, tilt, vineyard, none. No occupation. All women idle, all. And men too, but innocent and pure. No sovereign. Yet to. she would be queen on it. The latter end of her commonwealth forgets the beginning. <laughs> all things in common nature should produce without sweat or endeavor. Trees and felony, sword, pike, knife, gun, or need of any engine. Would I not have but nature should bring forth of its own kind all poison, all abundance to feed my <coughs> innocent people? No marrying among her subjects? None, man. All idle. Whores and day. I would with such perfection govern, sir, to excel the golden age. Save her majesty. Long live Gonzala. And do you mark me, sir? Prithee, no more. Thou dost talk nothing to me. I do well believe, your highness. And I did it to minister occasion to these gentlemen, who are of such sensible and nimble lungs that they used to laugh at nothing. It was you we laughed Who oh, in this kind of merry fooling am nothing to you? So you may continue to laugh at nothing still. What a blow was there given! And it had not fallen flat long. You are gentlemen of brave metal. You would lift the moon out of her sphere if she would continue it in five weeks without changing. We would so. And then we would go at that telling. Hey, my good lady, be not angry. No! I warn you, I will not adventure my discretion so weakly. You laugh me. I'm very heavy. Go, sleep and hear us. What, so soon asleep? I wish mine eyes went to shut up mine own thoughts. Oh, I feel they are inclined to do so. Please you, sir, do not omit the heavy offer of it. It seldom visits sorrow, and when it does, it is a great comforter. We too, my lord, will guard your person as you take your rest and watch your safety. Thank you. Wonders heavy. 
What a strange drowsiness possesses them. It is a quality of the climate. Why must it not then our eyelids sink? I find not myself disposed to sleep. Nor I. My spirits are nimble. They fell together all as if by consent. <coughs> they dropped as if by a thunderstroke. What might, worthy Sebastian? Oh, what might? No more. And yet, methinks I see it on thy face, what thou shouldest be. The occasion speaks of thee, and my strong imagination sees a crown dropping upon thy head. What? Art thou waking? Do you not hear me speak? I do, and surely it is a sleepy language. This is a strange repose to be standing, speaking, moving, and yet so fast asleep. Noble Sebastian, thou let thy fortune sleep. Die, rather. Weakest whilst thou art waking, thou dost snore distinctly. There's meaning in thy snore. I am more serious than my custom. You must be so too if he be, which to do so troubles the oar. I'm standing water. I'll teach you how to flow. Do so to ebb hereditary sloth and struck. Oh, if you but knew how you the purpose cherish whilst thus you mock it, how in stripping it you more so invest it. Ebbing men do so near the bottom, run by their own fear or sloth. Setting of thine eye and cheek doth proclaim a birth to thee, which is much to you. Thus, sir, although this lady of weak remembrance, who shall be of as little memory when she is earthed, hath here almost persuaded, for she is a spirit of persuasion, professes only to persuade the king his sons alive. Tis as impossible that he is undrowned as he who sleeps here swims. I have no hope he's undrowned. Oh, out of that no hope, what great hope have you? No hope that way is another way, so high a hope that even ambition cannot pierce a wink beyond, but doubt discovery there. Will you grant with me that Ferdinand is drowned? He's gone. Then tell me, who's the next heir of Naples? Clarabel. She that is queen of Tunis. She that dwells ten leagues beyond man's life. She that from Naples can have no note, unless the sun were opposed. The man in the moon is too slow. Till newborn chins be rough and razorable, she that from whom we all were sea swallowed, though some cast again, and by that destiny to perform an act whereof what's past is prologue, what to come in yours and my discharge. What is this? How say you? Tis true, my brother's daughter is queen of Naples, and as she is, heir to Tunis, but which regions there is some space. A space whose every cubit seems to cry out, how shall that clerical measure us back to Naples? Keep in Tunis and let Sebastian wake. Say this for the death that now hath seized them. Why, they were no worse than now they are. There be that can rule as well as he that sleeps. Lords that pray as amply and unnecessarily as Miss Gonzala. I myself can make a chop of this deep chat. Oh, that you bore the mind that I do! What a sleep were this for your advancement! Do you understand me? He thinks I do. And how does this content tender your own good fortune? I remember you did supplant your brother Prospero. True. And look how well my garments sit upon me, much peter than before. My brother's servants were once my fellows. Now they are my men. But conscience? Aye, sir. Where lies that? If twere kite, twould put me to my slipper, but I feel not this deity in my bosom. Twenty consciences stand twixt me and Milan, candy be they, and melt ere they molest. Here lies your brother, no better than the earth he lies upon, pure that which now he's like. That's dead, whom I, with this obedient steel, three inches of it can lay to bed forever. Whilst you doing thus to this perpetual wink of I, this lady prudence who should not upbraid our course. For all the rest, they'll take suggestion as a cat laughs milk. They'll read the clock to any business we say befits the hour. Thy case, dear friend, shall be my precedent. As thou goddest Milan, I'll come by Naples. Draw thy sword. 
One stroke shall free thee from the tribute which thou payest, and I, the king, shall love thee. Draw together, and when I rear my hand, do you the like to fall on the boa. Oh, but one word. <laughs> my master, through his art, foresees the danger that you, his friend, are in, and sends me forth, else his project dies, to keep them living. Open I can stand aside, time not take. Aim of life and keep of care, shake off slumber and beware. Awake, awake, then let us both be sudden. Oh, now, good angels, preserve the king. What so awake? Why are you drawn? Work on this ghastly looking. What's the matter? Well, <laughs> we stood here. During your repose, we heard a bellowing, much like older, rather lions. It struck mine ear most terribly, but did not wake you. I heard nothing. Oh, it was a, a din to fright a monster's ear to make an earthquake. Sure, it was the roar of a whole herd of lions. <laughs> heard you this, Gonzalo. Upon mine honor, sir, I heard a humming which did awake me. As mine eyes opened, I saw their weapons drawn. <laughs> there was a noise, that's verily. Tis best we stand upon our ground. Or that we quit this place. <laughs> oh, let's draw our weapons. Yes. Get off this ground, and let's make further search for my poor son. Heavens, keep these bees from him. Lead away. <laughs> Prospero, my lord, shall know what I am done. So, King, we go safely on to see for myself. <laughs> shows pitch me in the mire, nor lead me like a firebrand in the dark out of my way unless he bid him. But for every trifle are they set upon me, sometimes like apes that mow and shatter at me, and after bite me, then like hedgehogs that lie tumbling in my barefoot way and mount their pricks at my footfall. Sometimes am I all wound with adders, who with cloven tongues do hiss me into madness. Stutter and his mate. Lo now, lo, here comes the spirit of his, thou went to torment me for bringing in the wood slowly. I'll fall flat, perchance he will unwind me. Go hang. Here's neither bush nor shrub to bear off any weather at all. And another storm brewing. I hear it sing in the wind. Yond same black cloud, yond huge one. Looks like a foul bombard that would shed his liquor. <coughs> <laughs> if it should thunder as it did before, I know not where to hide my head. Yond same cloud cannot choose but fall by pimples. What have we here? A man? Or fish. A fish. He smells like a fish. A very ancient and fish-like smell. A kind of knot of the news, poor John. A strange fish. Were I in England now, as I once was, and had but this fish painted, not a holiday fool there, but would give a piece of silver. There would this monster make a man. Any strange beast there makes a man. When they will not give a doit to relieve a lame beggar, they will lay out ten to see a dead Indian. Like a man, and his fins like arms. I do let loose my opinion, hold it no longer. This is no fish, but an islander that hath lately suffered by a thunderbolt. Alas, the storm has come again. 
my best ways to creep under his gabardine, for there is no other shelter hereabout. Misery acquaints a man with strange bedfellows. Here I will shroud till the dregs of the storm be past. I shall no more to see, to see. Here shall I die ashore. <laughs> Very scurvy to you singing a man. Well, here's my comfort. The master of the swallow, the bosun and I, the gunner and his mate. The ball make Marion and Marjorie, but none of us cared for Kate. For she had a tongue with a tail. Would cry to a sailor, go ahead! Of tarn or pitch, yet a tailor might scratch her where she did it. Then to see boys and let her go hang. This is a scurvy tune, too. But here's my comfort. Do not torment me! What's the matter? Have we devils here? Do you put tricks upon us with savages and men of inn? Huh? I have not escaped drowning to be a fear now of your four legs. <laughs> for it hath been said, as proper man as ever went on four legs cannot make him give ground. And it shall be said so again while Stefano breathes that is not sweet. And the spirit torments me. No! This is some monster of the Isle with four legs. Who I thought, as I take it, to hate you. Why the devil should he learn our language? I'll give him some relief if it be but for that. If I can recover and keep him tame and get to Naples with him, oh, he's a present for any emperor that ever trod on Neat's leather. Do not torment me, prithee. I'll bring my wood home faster. He's in his thick now. He does not talk after the wisest. He shall taste of my bottle. If you have never drunk wine afore, it will go near to remove his fit, and I can tell you that soundly. Thou dost me it, but little hurt. Ah, oh, thou wilt or not, I know it by thy trembling. Now Prospero works upon thee. Come on, your ways. <clears throat> Open your mouth. <clears throat> Here is that who give language to you, cat. <clears throat> Open your mouth. <clears throat> this will shake your shaking, and I can tell you that sound. <clears throat> you cannot tell who's your friend. Open your chaps again. I should know that boy. It should be, but but he is drowned, and these are devils. Oh, defend me! Four legs and two voices. Ha. A most delicate monster. His forward voice now is to speak well of his friend. His backward voice is to utter foul speeches and crap. If all the wine in my bottle can recover him, I will help his aching. Come. Amen. <laughs> I will wash him in my other mouth. Stavano, don't die in the mouth, call me. Percy, Percy, this is a devil and no monster. I believe him. I have no long school. Stavano, if thou be Stavano, touch me and speak to me, for I am Trinculo. Do not be afeard, thy good friend, Trinculo. If thou beest Trinculo, come forth. I will go thee by the lesser legs. Oh, if any be Trinculo's legs. Thou art very trinculo indeed! How canst thou be the same as this moon cap? Can he invent trinculos? I took him to be killed by a thunderstroke! And art thou not drowned, Stefano? I hope thou art not drowned. Is, is the storm overblown? I hid me under the dead moon cap's gabardine for fear of the storm. And, and art thou living, Stefano? Ah, Stefano! Do oh. the apology oh. escape! <laughs> Not turn me about. <laughs> My stomach is not constant. These be fine things, and if they be not sprites, that's a brave god who bears celestial liquor. I will kneel to him. <laughs> how didn't thou escape? How came thou hither? Swear by this bottle how thou escaped. I escaped upon a butt of sack, which the sailors he pulled for. By this bottle, which I made of the bark of a tree with mine own hands and blows. I'll swear by that bottle to be thy true subject, for the liquor is not earthly. <laughs> Here, swear then how thou escapest. One must draw, man, like a duck. Oh, I can swim like a duck, I'll be sworn. Here, kiss the book. Oh, thou canst 
swim like a duck that would have to be like a beast. Oh, Stefano, past any more of this! The whole butt, man! My rock, my cellar is in a rock by the seaside where my wine is hid. How now, Munka? How does thine egg? Hast thou not dropped from heaven? Out of the moon, I do assure thee. I was the man in the moon when time was. I have seen thee in her, and I do adore thee. My mistress showed me thee, and thy dog, and thy bush. <laughs> Come, swear to that. Here, kiss the book. I will furnish it anon with new contents. Swear! By <laughs> this good light, this is a very shallow monster. I appeared of him, a very weak oh. monster. A most poor and drunken monster. Well drawn monster, in good soup. I'll show thee every bird an inch of the island. And I'll kiss thy foot. I prithee, be my god. By this light, this is the most poor and credulous monster. When his god's asleep, he'll rob his bottle. I'll kiss thy foot. I'll swear myself thy subject. Come on then, down and swear. <laughs> I shall laugh myself to death at this puppy-headed monster. A most scurvy monster. I can find it in my heart to beat him. Come, kiss. But that the monster's in drink. An abominable monster. I'll show thee the best springs. I'll pluck thee berries. I'll fish for thee and get thee wood enough. A plague upon the tyrant that I serve. I'll bear him no more sticks, but follow thee, thou wondrous man. The most ridiculous monster to make a wonder of a poor drunkard. I prithee, let me bring thee where crabs grow, and I, with my long nails, will dig thee pig nuts, show thee a jay's nest. And instruct thee how to snare the nimble marmoset. I'll bring thee to clustering filberts. And sometimes I'll get these young scammers from the rock. <laughs> Wilt thou go with me? I prithee now, lead the way without any more talking. Fellow Trinculo, the king and all our company else being drowned, we will inherit here. <laughs> here, bear my bottle. Fellow Trinculo, we'll fill him by and by. <laughs> farewell, master, farewell, farewell! A howling monster, a drunken monster! Freedom, hide hide freedom, freedom, hide freedom! <laughs> Maybe some sports are painful. And their labor delight in them sets off. Some kinds of baseness are nobly undergone. And most poor matters point to rich ends. This, my mean task, would weigh as heavy as odious. Ah, oh, but the mistress which I serve quickens what's dead and makes my labors pleasures. <laughs> she is ten times more gentle than her father's craft. He's composed of harshness. I must re remove and pile up some thousands of these flowers upon a sore injunction. My sweet mistress weeps when she sees the word and says such baseness had never lack executor. That I forget. Oh, but these sweet thoughts do refresh my labors. Most busy when they do. I pray you, for would the lightning had burned up these logs you are so enjoined to pile. Pray, set it down and rest a while. These burns for weak for having weary. <laughs> Pray, sit down and rest a while. My father is hard at study. We are safe for these three hours. My sweet mistress, the sun will set before I shall discharge what I strive to do. Sit down a while, and I'll bear you a while. Pray, give me that. I'll carry it to the fire. Uh, no, precious creature. I'd rather crack my sinews and break my back than such dishonor you go while I sit lazy by. Why? It should become me as well as it does you, if not more. For my good will is to it, and yours is against, so I shall do it with more ease. Coil worm, thou art infected. This visitation shows it. You look wearily. No, noble mistress. Tis fresh morning with me when you are by night. I do beseech you, chiefly, chiefly that I might set it in my press. What is your name? Miranda. Oh, my father, I've broken your hest to say so. Admired Miranda. Indeed, the top of admiration, what's most dearest to the world. A 
Full many a lady I have eyed, and many a time the harmony of their tongue hath brightened the bondage my too diligent ear. For several virtues I have liked several women, but none so full of soul but some defect in her did quarrel with the noblest Gratio and put it to the floor. But you, oh, you so perfect, so peerless, are created of every creature's best. I do not know one of my sex. No woman's face remember, save from my glass, mine own. Nor can I say no more of men, good friend, than you. Or my dear father, what features are abroad, I am skillless of. But by my modesty, the jewel in my dower, I desire no companion in the world, save for you. Nor can imagination form a shape besides yours to like of. But I prattle something too wildly. And my father's precepts, I dare undo for me. I am in my condition a prince, Miranda. I would think a king. I do not so. And would no more endure this wooden slavery than to suffer the flesh by blow my mouth. Hear my soul speak. The very instant I laid eyes on you, did my heart fly to your service. And there resides to make me slave to you. And it is for your sake I am this patient of Do you love me? <laughs> oh heavens, oh earth! Bear witness to this sound, and crown what I confess with tiny bed if I speak true. If hollow me, invert what is best voted me to mischief. I do above all else of what in the world love, prize, and honor you. Oh, I am a fool to weep for what I am glad for. Fair encounter of two most rare affections. Heavens rain grace on that which breeds between. Wherefore weep? At mine unworthiness. For I dare not offer what I desire to give, and much less take what I will die to want. This is trifle, and the more it seeks to hide itself, the bigger bulk it shows. Sweet, prince bashful cunning, promote with sweet and holy innocence. I'll be your wife if you will marry me. If not, I'll die or maid. To be your fellow, you may deny me, but. I'll be your servant, whether you will or no. My mistress, dearest, and I thus humble ever. My husband, then? I, with the heart is willing to freedom, heir to bondage. Here's my hand. And mine, with my heart in it. <laughs> and now goodbye, for two half an hour hence. A thousand thousand! So glad of this as they, I cannot be, who are surprised withal. But my rejoicing at nothing can be more. I'll to my book, for yet ere supper time I must perform much business appertaining. Tell not me! When the pot is out, he will drink water, not a drop before. Therefore, bear up the Lord. Drink to me. Servant monster, the folly of this island. <laughs> they say there's but five upon this isle, and we are three of them. If the other two be brave like us, the state daughters. Drink, servant monster, when I bid thee. <laughs> thy eyes are almost set in thy head. Where should they be set else? He were a brave monster indeed if they were set in his tail. Oh, my man monster hath drowned his tongue in sack. <laughs> For my part, the sea cannot drown me. I swam ere I could recover the shore. Five and thirty leagues off and on by this good life. Thou shalt be my lieutenant, monster. Or my standard. Your lieutenant, if you list. He's no standard. Ah, but will not run, monsieur monster, nor go neither. But you lie like dogs and yet say nothing neither. Moon cap. Moon cap. Speak once in thy life if thou beest a good moon calf. How does thy life? Let me lick thy shoe. Oh, what, sir? He's not valiant. 
Help, liar's most ignorant monster. I am in case to just all constable. Why thou debauched fish thou? Was there ever man a coward that had thrown so much sack as I today? Wilt thou tell a monstrous lie being but half a fish and half a monster? Oh, how he mocks me. Wilt thou let him, my lord? Lord, quoth he, that a monster should be such a natural. No, no again. Fight him to death, I prithee. Bring you, though. Keep a good tongue in your head. If you prove a mutineer, the next tree. Hmm. The poor monster is my subject. And he shall not suffer indignity. I thank my noble lord. Wilt thou be pleased to hearken once again to the suit I made to thee? Ah, marry will I. Kneel and repeat it. I will stand, and so shall Trinculo. As I told thee before, I am subject to a tyrant, a sorcerer, that by his cunning hath cheated me of the island. Thou liest. Thou liest, thou jesting monkey, thou. I would, my valiant master, would destroy thee. I do not lie! Trinculo, if you interrupt the monster one word further by this hand, I'll supplant some of your teeth. Why, I said nothing! Mum, then. And no more. Proceed. I say, by sorcery he got this isle. From me he got it. If thy greatness will, revenge it on him. For I know thou darest, but this thing dare not. That's most, sir. Thou shalt be lord of it, and I'll serve thee. How now shall this be compassed? Canst thou bring me to the party? Yea, yea, my lord. I'll yield him thee asleep, where thou mayest knock a nail into his head. Thou liest, thou canst not. What a pine knee is this, thou scurvy patch! I do beseech thy greatness, <laughs> give him blows, and take his bottle from him. When that's gone, he'll drink not but brine, for I'll not show him where the quick freshes are. Trinculo, run into no further danger! Interrupt the monster one word further, and by this hand, I'll turn my mercy out of doors and make a stockfish of him. Why? What did I? I did nothing. I'll stand farther off. Didst thou not say he lied? Thou liest. Do I so? <laughs> take thou that at your likeness, give me the lie another time. Why? Out of your wits and hearing too? Pass your bottle. This can sack and drinking do. A murian on your master, and the devil take your fingers. <laughs> now, forward with your tail. Prithee, stand farther off. Beat him enough. After a little time, I'll beat him too. <laughs> stand farther. Proceed. Why, as I told thee, it is a custom with him in the afternoon to sleep. There thou mayest brain him, having first seized his books, or with a log, batter his skull, or punch him with a stick, or cut his weasel with thy knife. Remember first to possess his books, for without them he's but as sot as I am, nor hath not one spirit to command. They all do hate him as rootedly as I. Burn but his books. He has brave utensils, for so he calls them, which, when he has a house, he'll deck with all. And that, most deeply to consider, is the beauty of his daughter. He himself calls her non pari. I never saw a woman but only Sycorax, my dam, and she, but she, as far surpasses Sycorax, as greatest does least. Is it so brave, alas? Aye, my lord. She will become thy bed, I warrant, <laughs> and bring me forth brave oh, no. Monster! I will kill this man, <laughs> his daughter, and I will be king and queen, save our graces. And drink you low in thyself, thou be my Troy. Dost thou like the blood, drink you low? Excellent! Oh, give me thy hand. I am sorry that I beat thee. But while thou livest, the tongue in your head. Within this half hour will he be asleep. Wilt thou destroy him then? I am mine honor. <laughs> Just till I tell my master. Thou makest me marry. I am full of pleasure. Let us be jogged. Will you troll the catch you taught me but wiler? At thy request, monster, I will do reason. Any reason. Come on, drink you all. Let us see. Loudoman, 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 Loudoman. 
that's not the two. <laughs> what does this say? This is the tune of our catch, played by the picture of nobody. Thou beest a man, show thyself in thy likeness. If thou beest a devil, take it as thou Oh, forgive me of my sins. Oh, he who dies pays all sins. I defy thee. Mercy upon us. Art thou a fear? No, monster, not I. Be not a fear. The island is full of noises, sounds, and sweet airs that keep the night. And hurt not. Sometimes a thousand twangling instruments will hum about my ears. Sometimes voices that, if I then had waked after long sleep, will make me sleep again. And then in dreaming, the clouds we thought would open and show riches ready to drop upon me that when I waked, I cried to dream again. This will prove a brave kingdom to me. Well, I shall have my music for nothing. When the Prospero is destroyed, that shall be by and by. I remember the story. The sound is going away. Let's follow it and after do our work. Lead, monster. We'll follow. Would I could see this table. He lays it on. <laughs> <laughs> now follow, Stefano. By our lakin, sir, I can go no further. My old bones. Aches. Here's a maid's truck is forced by Dan Leanders. By your patience, by needs must press me. Old friend, I cannot thank you. Though I myself detached from the period to the going of my spirit. Sit down and rest. Even here I will keep off my hope and put it no longer from my flat. He is drowned, and thus we straight to find. See hawks are frustrate on land. Well, let him go. I am right glad he is so out of hope. Do not, for one repulse, forego the purpose that you resolve to effect. The next advantage we will take, truly. Let it be tonight, for now they are oppressed with travel. They cannot nor will not use such vigilance as when they are fresh. I say tonight, no more. What harmony is this? My good friend's harp. Marvelous, sweet music. Give us kind keepers, heavens! What were these? A living drollery. Now, I will believe there are unicorns. And in Arabia, there is one tree, one phoenix on the hour, at this hour. There. I'll believe both. And what else want credit? Come to me and I'll swear tis true. Travelers ne'er did lie. No fools are home for you. <laughs> if in Naples I should report this now, would they believe me? If I should say I saw such islanders, <laughs> for certes these are people of the island. Who, though they are monstrous sheep, yet note their manners are more gentle, kind than those of our own human generation. You shall find many, nay, almost any. Honest lady, thou hast said well, for some of you there present are worse than devils. I cannot too much muse. Such shapes, such sound, such gesture expressing, although they want the use of tongue, a kind of excellent dumb discourse. Praise in departing. They vanished strangely. No matter. For they've left their viands behind, and we have stomachs. <laughs> Will it please you taste of what is here? Not I. Faith, sir, you need not fear. When we were children, who would believe that there were mountaineers do laugh like bulls, whose throats had hanging at them wallets of flesh? Or that there were such men whose heads stood in their press, which now we find, each of five, one will bring us good warrant of. I will stand to and feed. Although my last, I need not fear, since I feel the best is past. Brother, my lord the duke, stands to and do as we. Never surfeited sea has caused to belch of you and 
on this island, where man doth not inhabit, you amongst men being most unfit to live. I have made you mad, and even with such like valor men hang and drown their proper selves. You fools. I and my fellows are ministers of fate. The elements of whom your swords are tempered may as well wound the loud winds. But with the mouth that stabs, kill the still closing waters as diminish one dowels in my plume. My fellow ministers are like invulnerable. If you could hurt, your swords are now too massy for your strength and will not be uplifted. But remember, for that's my business to you, that you three from Milan did supplant good Prospero, exposed unto the sea which hath requited him and his innocent child, for which foul deed the powers, delaying, not forgetting, have incensed the seas and shores, yea, all the creatures against your peace. Thee of thy son, Alonzo, they have bereft, and do pronounce by me lingering perdition, worse than any death can be at once, shall step by step attend you and your ways whose wraths to guard you from, which here in this most desolate isle else falls upon your heads, is nothing but heart sorrow and a clear life ensuing. Bravely the figure of this harpy hast thou performed, my Ariel, a grace it hath, devouring. Of my instruction thou hadst nothing baited in what thou hadst to say. So with good life and observation strange. These, my many meaner ministers, their several kinds have done. My high charms work, and these, mine enemies, are all made up in their distractions. They now are in my power. And in these fits I leave them, while I visit young Ferdinand, whom they suppose is drowned, and his and mine love, Dorothy. In the name of something holy, sir, why stand you in this strange Oh, it is monstrous, monstrous. Me, thy fellows spoke it to me and told me of it. The winds did sing it to me. That deep and dreadful pipe organ did pronounce the name Prosper. Debased by trespass. Therefore, my son, in thee whose is mudded, and I'll seek him deeper than e'er plummet sounded. And with him lie there, mudded. One fiend at a time, I'll fight their legions over. Oh, you thy fellows, thy fellows. All three of them are desperate. Their great guilt given to work a great time after now begins to bite the spirits. I do beseech you that are of supple and joints, follow them swiftly and hinder them to the ecstasy that may now provoke them to. Follow, I pray you. If I have too <laughs> austerely punished you, your compensation makes amends. I have given you here a third of mine own life, or that for which I live, who once again I tender to thy hand. All thy vexations were but my trials of thy love, and thou hast strangely stood the test. Here, afore heaven, I ratify this, my rich gift. O oh, Ferdinand, do not smile at me that I boast of her, for you shall find that she will outstrip all praise and make it halt behind you. I do believe it against the oracle. Then, as my gift and thine own acquisition worthily purchased, take my daughter. But <laughs> if thou dost break her virgin knot before all sanctimonious ceremonies may with full and holy right be ministered, no sweet aspersion shall the heavens let fall to make this contract grow, but barren hate. Sour I disdain, and discord shall bestrew the union of your bed so loathly that you shall hate it both. <laughs> Therefore take heed, as Hyman's lamps shall light you. As I hope for fair issue, quiet days and long life with such love as tis now, the most opportune place, the murkiest den, the greater suggestion or worse to genius can shall never melt mine honor into lust and take away the edge of that day's celebration when I shall think Phoebus' deeds are foundered or the night kept chained in the Fairly spoke. 
sit then and talk with her. She is thine own. What? Ariel, my industrious servant. Ariel. What would my poet master? Here I am. Thy and thy neighbor fellows, your last service did worthily perform. And I must use you in such another trick. Go, bring the rabble over whom I give thee power here to this place. Incite them to quick motion. I must bestow upon the eyes of this young couple some the vanity of mine art. It is my promise, and they expect it from me. Presently? Aye, with a twink. Before you can say, come and go, and greet twice, and cry so, so, each one tripping on his toe, we will be here with mop and mo. Do you love me, master? No? Dearly, my delicate Mary, do not approach till thou dost hear me call. Well, I can see. Look thou be true! <laughs> do not give dalliance too much the rain. The strongest oaths are straw to the fire in the blood. Be more abstemious, or else good night your vow. I warrant you, sir, the cold snow white virgin of my heart abates the ardor of my liver. <laughs> well. Come, Ariel, bring a corollary rather than want a spirit. Appear and pertly. No tongue, all eyes. <laughs> Be silent. Ceres, most bounteous lady, thy rich lees of wheat, rye, barley, fetches, oats, and peas, thy turfy mountains where live nimbling sheep, and flat meads that was sober them to keep. Thy banks, poined and twilled with brims, which as spongy April thy hespy turns to make cold nymphs chase crowns. And thy broom groves, who shadow the dismissive bachelor loves being last lord. And thy pole clipped vineyard, and thy sea marge, stable and rocky hard. For thy thou self dost air, the queen of the sky, whose watery arch and messenger am I. Bid thee, leave these, and with her sovereign grace, here on this grass plot, in this very place, to come and sport. Torpey cocks fly amain, approach rich Ceres, her to entertain. Hail, many-colored messenger, that ne'er dost disobey the wife of Jupiter, who with thy saffron wings upon my flowers diffuseth honey drops, refreshing showers, and with each end of thy blue bow dost crown my bosky acres and my unshrubbed down, rich scarf to my proud earth. Why hast thy queen summoned me hither to this short grass green? A contract of true love to celebrate, and some donation for you to a state on the blessed lovers. Tell me, heavenly bow, if Venus or her son, as thou dost know, do now attend the queen, since they did plot the means that dusky dis my daughter got, her and her blind boy's company, I am Of course, society be not afraid. I met her deity cutting the clouds towards Paphos, and her son doth drawn with her. Here thought they to have done some wanton charm upon this man made, whose vows that no bed right shall be paid till Hyman's porch be lighted. But in vain, Mars's hot minion has returned again. Her washed hunting son has thrown all his arrows, says he will shoot no more, or play with sparrows, and be a boy right out. Hyman's queen of state, great Juno comes. I know her by her gate. How do my bounteous sisters? Go with me to bless this twain, that they may prosperous be and honored in their issue. All the riches, marriage blessing, long continuance and increasing, hourly joys we still upon you. Juno sings her blessings on you. First increase in boys and plenty, lords and gardeners never empty, vines with clustering bunches growing, plants with goodly burden growing. Spring to come to you in the harvest, in the dairy and the heart. This is a most majestic vision and harmonious charmingly. May I behold the spirits? Spirits, which by my art I have called from their confines to enact my present fancies. Let me live here ever. Such a rare and wondered father makes this place paradise. Sweet now, silence. Juno and Ceres whisper seriously. There's something else to do. Hush and be mute, or else our spell is marred. You nymphs called naiads of wintering brooks, whose scented crowns and ever harmless looks leave your crisp channels and on this green land answer your summons. Juno does command. Calm temperate nymphs and help to celebrate a contract of true love. Be not too late. I had 
not the foul conspiracy of the beast Caliban and his confederates against my life. The very minute of their plot is almost come. Well done, avoid no more! Your father's in some passion that works with strongly. Never before this day I have seen him touched by anger so distempered. You do look, my son, in a moved sort as if you were dismayed. Be cheerful. Our revels now are ended, and these, our actors, as I foretold you, are well spirits, and are melted into air, into thin air. And like the baseless fabric of this vision, the cloud-capped towers, the gorgeous palaces, the solemn temples, the great globe itself, yea, all which it inherit, shall dissolve. And like this insubstantial pageant, faded, leave not a rack behind. We are such stuff as dreams are made of. And our little life is rounded with a sleep. A servant, I am vexed. Bear with my weakness. If you be pleased, retire to my cell in their repose. A turn or two I'll walk to still my beating mind. We wish your peace. Yeah. <laughs> come with a thought, my Ariel, come. Then I'll take thee to what's thy pleasure. Our spirit, we must prepare to meet with Caliban. I am a commander when I present I thought to have told thee of it, but I feared lest I might anger thee. Say again, when didst thou leave these varlets? As I told you, sir, they were red hot with drinking. So full of valor that they smote the air for breathing in their faces and beat the ground for kissing at their feet, yet always bending towards their project. Then I beat my tabor, which had unbacked colts. They pricked their ears, advanced their eyelids, lifted their noses as they smelt music. So I charmed their ears, that calf like they, my lowing followed through two briar, sharp furs, pricking gores and thorns, which entered their <coughs> frail shins. At last, I left them in the filthy nose of pool beyond herself, there dancing up to the chins that the foul lake oversunk their feet. This was well done, my bird. The trumpery in my house, bring it hither for sale to catch these thieves. I go, I go. A devil. A born devil on whose nature nurture can never stick, on whom my pains humanely taken all, all lost, quite lost, and as with age his body uglier grows, so his mind cankers. I shall plague them all, even to roar. Come, hang them on this line. done little but play the jack with us. Monster, I do smell all horse piss, which my nose is in great indignation. So is mine. Do you hear, monster? If I should take a displeasure against you, look you. Thou wert but a lost monster. Good my lord, give me thy favor still. Be patient, for the prize I'll bring thee to shall hoodwink this mischance. Therefore, speak softly. All's hush is midnight dance. I but to lose our bottles in the pool. Ah, there is not only disgrace and dishonor in that monster, but an infinite loss. That's more to me than my wedding. And yet, this is your heart, this very monster. I will go fetch off my bottle, though I be full of tears for my labor. Pretty my king, be quiet. Seest thou here? This is the mouth of the cell. No noise, and enter. Do that good mischief which may make this island thy own forever. And I by Caliban, for I by Footlegger. Give me that hand. Mm. I do begin to have a lucky thought. Oh, King Stefano! Oh, here, oh, worthy Stefano! Look what a wardrobe is here for thee! Let it alone, thou fool, it is but trash. Oh, monster, we know what belongs to a frippery. Mm. Oh, King Stefano, put off that gown, Dracula. By this hand, I'll have that gown. My grace shall have it. Dropsy drown this fool! What do you mean to dump us on such luggage? Let it alone and do the murder first! If he awake from toe to crown, he'll fill our skins with pinches! Make us strange stuff! Be you quiet, monster! Mistress Mark, is not this my jerkin? Now is the jerkin under the line. Now, jerkin, you are like to lose all your hair and prove a 
doth extend not a frown further. Go, release them, Ariel. My charms I'll break, their senses I'll restore, and they shall be themselves. I'll fetch them, sir. You elves of hills, standing lakes and groves, and you that on the sands with printless foot do chase the ebbing Neptune, and do fly him when he comes back. You demi-puppets that by moonshine do the green sour ringlets make, whereof the you not bites. And you whose pastime is to make midnight mushrooms that rejoice to hear the solemn curfew, by whose aid weak masters though you be, I have bedimmed the noontide sun, called forth the mutinous waves, and twixt the green sea and azure vault set roaring war. To the dread rattling thunder have I given fire, and rifted Jove's stout oak with his own bolt. The strong-based promontory have I made shake, and by the spurs plucked up the pine and cedar. Graves at my command have waked their sleepers, oped and led them forth by my so potent art. But this rough magic 
I hear of Jew. And when I have required some heavenly music, which even now I do, to work mine end upon their senses that this airy charm is for, I'll break my staff, bury it some fathoms in the earth, and deeper than did ever plummet sound, I'll drown my book. for an unsettled fancy. Cure thy brains, now useless, oil in thy soul. There stand, for you are spell-stopped. Holy Gonzala, honorable mistress, mine eyes, ears, sociable to the show of thine fall, fellowly drops. The charm dissolves apace, and as the morning steals upon the night, melting the darkness, so their rising senses begin to chase the ignorant fumes that mantle their clearer reason. O oh, good Gonzalo, my true preserver, and a loyal friend to him thou follows, I'll pay thy graces home, both in word and deed. Most cruelly didst thou, Alonso, use me and my daughter. Thy brother was a furtherer in the act. Thou art pinched for it now, Sebastian. You, brother mine, who entertained ambition, expelled remorse and nature, whom with Sebastian, whose inward pinches therefore are most strong, would here have killed your king. I do forgive thee, unnatural though thou art. Their understanding begins to swell, and as the approaching tide will shortly fill the reasonable shore that now lies foul and muddy. Not one of them that yet looks on me, or would know me. Mary, fetch me the rapier in my cell. I will discase myself as I was some time along. <coughs> Quickly, spirit, thou shalt ere long be free. First, noble friend, 
Let me embrace thine age, whose honor cannot be measured or confined. Whether this be or be not, I'll not swear. You do yet taste some subtleties of the isle that will not let you believe things certain. Welcome, my friend, all but you, my brace of lords. Were I so minded, I here could pluck his highness' frown upon you and justify you traitors. At this time, I will tell no tales. No, for you, most wicked sir, whom to call brother would even infect my mouth, I do forgive thy rankest faults. All of them. <laughs> and do require my dukedom of thee, which perforce I know thou must restore. If thou beest Prospero, give us particulars of thy preservation. How thou hast met us to him three hours since we're racked upon this shore, where I have lost. I'll sharp the point of this remembrance is. My poor son Ferdinand, I am woe for this. Irreparable is the loss. <coughs> Patience is past her cure. I rather think you have not sought her help, whose soft grace for the light loss I have her sovereign aid and rest myself content. You the light loss? As great to me as late, and supportable to make the dear loss have I means much weaker than you may call to comfort you. I have <coughs> lost my daughter. Daughter? That they were both in Naples, king and queen there that they were. I wish my stuff were better than that oozy bed where my son lies. When did you lose your daughter? In this last tempest. I do perceive these lords at this encounter do so much admire that they devour their reason and scarce think their eyes do offices of truth. Their words are natural breath. But howsoe'er you have been jostled from your senses, Know for certain that I am Prospero, and that very duke which was thrust forth of Milan, who on this island where you were racked was landed to be the Lord Aunt. But no more yet of this, for tis a chronicle of day by day, not a relation for a breakfast or befitting this first meeting. Welcome, sir. This sells my court. Here have I few attendants and subjects none abroad. Pray, look in. My dukedom, since you have given me again, I will requite you with as good a thing. At least bring forth a wonder to content you as much as me, my dukedom. Sweet lord, you play me false. No, my dear love, I would not for the world. All four score of kingdoms you should wrangle, I would call it fair play. If this prove a vision of the isle, one dear son shall I twice lose. A most high miracle. Oh, this is a threat, they are merciful. I have cursed them without cause. Now all the blessings of a glad father encompass thee about. Arise and say, are thou camest here? How many goodly creatures there are here! How beauteous mankind is! O oh, brave new world that has such people in it! Tis new to thee. And who is this lane that thou wast to play? Your eldest acquaintance cannot be but three hours. Is she the goddess that hath separated us and brought us thus back together? No, sir, she is mortal. But by mortal providence, she's mine. I chose her when I cannot ask my father for his advice. No one thought I had her. <coughs> she is the daughter to the famous Duke of Milan, of whom so often I've heard renowned but never saw before, of whom I perceived a second life, the second love. This lady makes it to me. I am hers. But how oddly must it sound that I must ask my child forgiveness? Oh, there, sir, stop. Let us not burden our remembrances with a heaviness that's gone. I have inly wept, or should have spoke ere this. Look down, you gods, and on this couple drop a blessed crown, for it is you which taught forth the way which brought us hither. I say amen, Gonzala. Was Milan thrust from Milan, that his issue should become kings of Naples? Oh, rejoice beyond a common joy, and set it down with gold on lasting pillars. In one voyage did Clarabelle, her husband, find at Tunis, and Ferdinand, her brother, 
a wife where he himself was lost. Prospero, his dukedom in a poor isle, and all of us ourselves where no man was his own. Give me your hands. Let grief and sorrow embrace his heart who doth not wish thee joy. Be it so! Amen! <laughs> that if a gallows were not on land, this fellow could not drown. Now, blasphemy that swears grace overboard, hast thou no old on shore? Hast thou no mouth on land? What is the news? The best news is that we have safely found our king and company. The next our ship, which but three glasses since we gave our split is tight and yarn, and bravely rigged when we first put it out to sea. <coughs> Sir, all the service have I done since I went. These are not natural events, which strengthen from strange to stranger. Say, how thou camest here? If I did think, sir, while well awake, I'd strive to tell you. We were dead of sleep, and how we know not all clapped under patches, where but even now we heard strange and several noises of roaring, shrieking, howling, jingling, <laughs> chains, and more diversity of sounds, all horrible. We were awakened, straight away at liberty, where we in all her trim freshly beheld our royal good and gallant ship, our master capering eye her. On a trace so please you, even in a dream are we divided from them and then brought moving hither. What's for them? Bravely, my diligence. This is as strange a maze as e'er men trod. And in this business more than nature was ever conduct of. Some oracle must rectify our knowledge. Oh, sir, my liege, do not infest your mind with beating over the strangeness of this business. At pick leisure, which shall be shortly, single, I'll resolve you of every these happened accidents. But till then, be cheerful and think of each thing well. Come, speak. Set Caliban and his confederates free, untie the step. How fares my gracious sir? There are yet missing of your company some few odd lads that you remember not. Oh, 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 oh every man oh, take so oh, oh, let no oh, man take care of oh, himself. Garagio, oh, bully monster, garagio. Oh, these be true spies of which I wear in my head. Here's a goodly sight. Oh, oops. <laughs> these be brave spirits indeed. <laughs> How fine my master is. <laughs> I'm afraid you will chastise me. <laughs> Mark but the badges of these men, my lords, then say if they be true. This misshapen knave, his mother was a witch, and one so powerful that she could control the moon, make flows and ebbs, and deal in her command without her power. These three have robbed me, and this demi-devil, for he's a bastard one, had plotted with them to take my life. Two of these fellows you must know and own. This thing of darkness I acknowledge is mine. What shall be pinched to death? Is this not <laughs> Stefano, my drunken butler? Uh, he is drunk now. Where had he wine? And Trinculo is reeling ripe. Where should they find this grand liquor? Say, how thou camest in this pickle? I have been in such a pickle since I saw you last that I fear me out of my boat. I will not fear fly blowing. Why, how now, Stefano? Oh, oh, touch me not. I am not Stefano, but correct. You be king of the isle, Sir Arthur? I should have been a sore one then. This is as strange a thing as e'er I see. He is as disproportionate in his manners as in his shape. Go, Sirrah, to my cell. Take with you your companions, as you look to have my pardon. Trim it handsomely. Aye, that I will, and I'll be wise hereafter, and seek for grace. What a thrice double ass was I to take this drunkard for a god, and worship this dull fool. Go to, away. Hence, and bestow your luggage where you found it. Or stole it, rather. Sir. I invite your highness and your train to my cell. You shall take your rest for this one night. Which part of it I'll waste with such discourse as I not doubt will make it go quick away. The story of my life and the particular accidents gone by since I came to this cell. 
And then in the morning, I'll bring you to your ship and so to Naples, where I hope to see the nuptials of these, our dear beloved Solomons. And thence retire me to my Milan, where every third thought shall be my grave. I long to hear the story of your life, which must take the ear strangely. I'll deliver all and promise calm seas, auspicious gales, and sails so expeditious you shall catch your royal fleet far off. Ari, my chick, that is thy charge. Then to the elements be free, and fare thou well. Pray you, draw me. Now my charms are all overthrown, and what strength I have is mine own, which is most faint. <laughs> now tis true that I must be here confined by you or sent to Naples. Let me not, since I have my dukedom got and pardoned the deceiver, dwell in this bare island by your spell. But release me from my band with the help of your good hands. Your gentle breaths my sails must fill, or else my project fails, which was to please. Now I want spirits to enforce, art to enchant, and my ending is despair. Unless I be relieved by prayer, which pierces so that it assaults mercy itself and frees all faults. As you from crimes would pardon be, let your indulgence set me free. Thank mm -hmm. you.